Australia as you ride with John Mann and the group in Mustang and that's the placing for you after four laps Mann UK who's driving the Lotus uh, Cortina then we have Smith Allen Tweedy and Fallon and also Tino Leo in the gold Mustang that made a mess of the start he couldn't select gears is working his way up and is now in fifth place so we may may yet get to see a little bit of him Jack it's a shame that he, he blew the start because uh, these two are very fierce competitors well, there we go on board camera again with John Mann as he wields his way around this Adelaide racetrack. The, the sight of that car reminds me of the Keegans. I remember Leo and I love mine, Big Pete. When I first came to Australia, Pete was a big man then, but I understand he hasn't got any smaller. He has grown considerably, Jackie, yes. And, of course, uh, Black Pete, as he was known in those days, the cars originally... Oh, here we go. We brakes. talked about brakes. Running out of brakes, and that's exactly what's happened in the area we talked about. The crowd loves this. No, maybe more than brakes, I think, because he just seemed not to be able to do very much there, apart from anything else. The brakes, I think... I think he's got a motor problem as well because at least he would have continued with the brakes and maybe pumped them up with his left foot. He's lifted the hood on the car. This is our on-camera position from inside John Mann's car. There's John looking at it from outside. The, the office is closed as far as doing well in this race is concerned. That could be a result from the uh, earlier accident on Thursday that we talked about because the car was shortened up considerably in that area. So perhaps something has broken after all that work. OK, so we come back now to uh, Duquay, Mark Duquay now, who is, is leading now in the Lotus Cortina. And as we said, we thought it was break, something's happened, but he's out in front. Well, Duquay and his Lotus Cortina had a little wrinkle in the rear right hand of the vehicle. I noticed he had dinged it slightly in practice uh, yesterday when I was walking down the pit lane. You're not seeing the mark right now. It's round as he comes around. We might see it now. Yes, there's a bit of a ding there that they've tried to clear out. This car really should be driven on no more than three wheels. They don't drive fast enough if they're running on four wheels. And if you get it onto two wheels, you're then approaching the speeds of people like Jim Clark and John Whitmore and Jack Sears and people of that ilk who way back in those 60s were really the kings of those cars. They never stayed in four wheels and the car felt a disaster to drive. Well, there was a fellow out here called Jim McEwen that used to do exactly the same thing many years ago. And Alan Moffat, of course, drove one of these cars with a, with a lot of verve, but it's uh, Mark Duquet at the moment. He's found himself in the lead, and there they go. Now he's had a little listen, Jackie, because he's popping them up on the ripple strips this time round. Well, that's good. He now finds himself in the lead, and, of course, this car dominated touring car racing. The Mustang was not allowed into touring car racing, saloon car racing in Europe. It was considered to be a GT or a Gran Turismo car. But the Cortina revolutionised it, and it started beating cars like this. The Chevrolet, in the case of, in Europe, the Impala, in fact, it was. And people like Jack Brabham and Dan Gurney came over and drove these big cars. And look at the back end of that one slip out. Now, this fellow's paid almost $100,000 for this car. He only picked it up on Monday, and he's uh, just coming to grips with this. But there was a guy called Noel Beecher that used to run one of these things many years ago, and he was very fast in that car. And uh, what a handful. And what a spectacular sight. Colin Wilkinson in the big Chevrolet Impala. He's using up every inch of this track. Well, it was those Impalas that, in fact, unseated the Jaguar 3.8-litre cars that were winning in the UK when uh, the touring car racing was at its height at that time. Bob Jane came over to Europe and drove touring cars for John Coombs, who was a Jaguar dealer, and he set the header on fire. Bob Jane came in there and upset and ruffled a few feathers, so that was fun. It was this kind of car that did it. OK, more slipping and sliding coming your way from Adelaide. We'll be back shortly. Changed uh, quite considerably whilst we're in the break. Col uh, Clem Smith, now the local South Australian driver who owns a Malalar circuit over here, has forced his way through. Tino Leo in the Mustang that bogged down on the start is now set second. Allen in the Mini Cooper S is third. Then we have Tweedy, Tilly and UK way back now after uh, slipping and sliding around and finding some problems, Jackie. Well, Duquay certainly has lost a lot of ground because he seemed to be in command after Johnny Mann went out in his Mustang. Now it's big cubic inch power that's showing itself once again to be in command here and it's tough to beat cubic inches. 
nine point uh, nine seconds between first and second now Clem Smith he started racing for a lot of fans I remember the car it was very famous uh, a bright red FJ Holden that featured a Jaguar gearbox many years ago and he's had a succession of cars since then but he really does uh, do a lot of the, the work here now and these days there's the difference between first and second it's only down to three and four seconds now and this Tino Leo has put an unbelievable drive in here, Jackie. Yeah, we were just looking at first, second, third, fourth and fifth now, really coming down this long street. We were able to see that there isn't that much in it anymore. And of course, there's a... Sh and there is Ducati there. He's further back again. He's down in fifth position. So I think... Uh, I think we're going to see maybe with only about one and a half laps left to run, we could see a very close finish indeed. There you see the leaders. You can see all of the cars in the picture now. OK, so we really do have a dogfight on our hands for the last lap as they're coming round for that. Now, there's Smith and there's Tino Leo in that gold Mustang coming onto the straight behind him. Whether he's got enough time now, there's only uh, metres in it. As Tino Leo had a dreadful start and lost something like five or six positions off the grid. Clem Smith steadily moved through, but now the charge is on. So Smith out in front, five... 0.5 seconds the difference between the two cars at the moment visually they're in contact and that'll help Tino Leo a bit but Clem Smith all he's really got to do is block him at this stage well I think he's got at least 250 meters in hand unless he does something very wrong I don't really see how Leo can catch him but he's driven a well-balanced race he's obviously per preserved his brakes because that could be a great temptation even on this last lap to hammer his brakes a wee bit too much you mentioned the Gagan the brothers some time back uh, in the race I remember a race in Mustangs at Mount Panorama between Big Pete Gagan and Alan Moffat in a race that uh, well I still talked about in Australia Jackie it was one of the great events not quite uh, close this time but by gee a good drive from Clem Smith and a great drive from Tino Leo. He really has forced his way through to stay in contact to be second at the moment. He is trying hard. You could see his car, uh, Leo's car, getting really sideways on that last corner there. Now they're coming under heavy braking at the end of the straight here. He certainly got in closer. He would say, I would say he's only now about 150 yards behind. Whether it, I, I doubt if it's enough, though, because they've really only got three corners left, and there isn't that much traffic in hand. I'm sure he'll get fast round here. Yep, one driver's moving over for him. A little bit of a... Oh, yeah, he's got it nailed now. He's in good shape, because there's only one corner left. The Foster's hairpin to get round, and then he's sailing clean. So, Clem Smith, the South Australian driver, this will be a popular win uh, locally here. They just love this fellow. He's been around for a long time. As I said, owns the Malalar circuit. And there he takes the chequered flag. Now, Tino Leo with a great drive, taking second place. And he uh, really had to do a lot of hard work to get back into into that position as the big Chevy Novas come round now. And the brakes lasted a lot better than we thought, Jackie. They really did power their way through to, uh, to make quite a difference between the gap that was set up. There's Tilly coming through now in the, uh, the sister of those cars. And that was quite an event and one that the, the public here really enjoy. I guess, Jackie, they're cars that a lot of people can relate back to and they realise that they are on skinny tyres, are on drum brakes. And there now, as we look through the windscreen, of young Brian Sala's car as he finishes his first major event here at the Adelaide International Circuit. Well, I think nostalgia has a lot to do with appreciation. You can see that the results, final results, as they've crossed the finishing line, this young man here of only 15 tender years has still got about a third of the racetrack still to do as he comes down for the last time into Brabham straight, the end of it. Going into the hairpin, crossing over his arms, accelerating away, a nice little light car to drive. So Brian Sala taking his uh, last few corners here to finish. Probably one of the, the races that he won't uh, forget in a long, long time. It's the first big meeting that he's attended. I know his father will be extremely proud out uh, there watching this race. They've put a lot of work to get this car out, and we'll see a lot more of this young fellow in the time to come. He comes up.